Hello and welcome into a video about Wirestorm integration with Crestron control systems. We're going to be talking about AV over IP uh, devices from Wirestorm. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on Network HD 400 series because they're quite interesting uh, price-wise and on top of it all they have very interesting features about which uh, we're going to be talking about in this video. And that is the IR portion of them. Uh, why I say interesting is because, well, basically, Wirestorm allowed uh, all the integrators to shoot Pronto codes through them. And why exactly I'm making this video is because uh, I created an alternative, basically, to uh, to their own program. Now you'll notice that all of their modules are uh, are available on the website, but they're locked, as you can see and if you try to edit anything it's going to be basically impossible uh, and on top of it all if uh, you try to open let's say any of the help files if you're confused at some point uh, you'll notice that uh, there's no help available so you're on your own and you'll need to figure out what uh, what does what uh, they do cover up quite an extensive number of commands so uh, why what I did is I just uh, created a simpler version of, of everything and my modules are open, they'll be available on uh, Crestron Yahoo groups. Uh, I'll post a link in the description uh, if anybody would like to, to work on them. And basically what I did is create a TCP IP client uh, to which uh, all of the IR individual modules will be transmitting a certain string and uh, in turn, the main module will link into a text file that is on the processor, uh, pick up the Pronto code from that text file, and then uh, shoot it out to Wirestorm control module. Now, it is kind of uh, interesting to know that there is not everything is going to be open. I'm not going to be locking any of the modules. So, should you want to modify anything, uh, feel free. I created this only. Uh, as a as an experiment so if somebody finds it interesting by all means upgrade it you will notice that uh, in the function main i only created just a readout function of of the file from the processor that uh, you can place wherever you'd like uh, just as long as you note uh, note that location within the module pro uh, parameters and uh, what it does is just shoots out the uh, infrared command to whichever uh, let's say receiver or transmitter unit from Wirestorm you have. Uh, all you need to do is uh, specify the alias of uh, any of the RX or TX boxes and it will send a command, prompt a command to it and in turn execute it. Now what I did also with the uh, with the IR module itself, it, it actually does nothing much. It uh, only sends a string which contains the alias and uh, also I added a function for uh, oscillating a certain certain IR pulse which is a problem as if you know in normal serial IO or any other module that you use you can just send it once and then you need to create uh, a, let's say a certain structure that will oscillate uh, an IR pulse and in turn move left continuously or right or, or raise the volume or so on uh, this is just uh, for convenience all packed in one simple plus module and uh, once you pulse it or once you hold it you'll see that you have the hold time and the repeat time uh, i noticed that around the uh, 0.1 second is is quite uh, quite good for controlling any of the irs but uh, if you have a different tire uh, let's say pronto code and if it behaves differently you can adjust that at any time now uh, you can see that i have a playstation 3 text file that I've created with a program called Vert. I think it's available on Remote Central. Uh, what it does is just it takes the Crestron files that you see here from Apple TV and PlayStation 3 and converts them into whichever file format you'd like. Now, I've converted it into a file WIR and it basically is interesting because it uh, shows you all the Pronto codes. Now, uh, once you open it, you'll see that uh, the IR file uh, PlayStation 3 that I'll open just in a second is uh, containing all the Pronto commands but they are a little bit uh, uh, jumbled up and down uh, because of the Vert program 
but it does convert every single command. So if you open the, uh, let's say the IR file from Crestron, you'll see that there is around six commands. And if you go back to, to the text file, you will notice that the file conversion didn't go really according to plan. So just delete the unnecessary bits. But what is important that every pronto code is delimited uh, by a carriage return and line feed. Uh, also, you can delete all of the unnecessary uh, bits like the names and so on. The order of the commands will match the commands within the IR file of, of the Crestron uh, part. So the only important thing is that you have a clean pronto code delimited by a carriage return and line feed as that plays a part in the, uh, in the simple plus module that I've created. Obviously, you can change that if, uh, if you'd like and create a module that will behave uh, in a different way. Uh, this is not really a PlayStation IR file. This is an, an Epson uh, projector IR file. It, it's used for a small remote control that, that moves the mouse basically up, down, left, right, and you have left and right uh, button uh, mouse clicks. It was used for a PlayStation, very old PlayStation 3 control that didn't have CC commands. So I had to resort to uh, controlling it over IR. Uh, now we're going to open... Uh, the file manager from Crestron and we're gonna connect to a processor that, that I have and we're going to just see if I already created I, I did create I did create the IR file I will just delete that and uh, we're gonna create uh, basically the same folder just to make sure it's empty we're gonna copy into it the just created uh, PlayStation 3 TXT file there we go. And uh, once we do that, we'll just go back to simple windows. And you'll see now that uh, all of these IR signals will be just sent to the main module. And it's just important that uh, that you specify in the parameter properties the exact text name, uh, text file name. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to pick it up and it's not going to work. Now, what we're going to do is just try to compile this and upload so it's going to take a minute or two i think this is the yeah this is the address of the processor in the uh, in the office there we go and we're just gonna upload it to the processor there we go now once this is done we're gonna open a simple debugger which is basically a debugging tool for for uh, Crestron and uh, we're gonna see how it behaves and then what it does there we go we're gonna just skip the uploading and the waiting and there we go simple debugger all right okay and we're in so now you will see over here that uh, if you connect, you will see that uh, the feedback will jump high. It will note, it will explain to you, it will show you that uh, basically you're connected to the processor. The state will match the state, the status will match the status of the TCP IP client. You can see that in the help file of Crestron. And if I trigger an, any IR pulse, you'll see that it sends a command. And this is basically responses from Wirestorm control system. Uh, if I tap them, it just uh, just sends a command. If I trigger, let's say, an IR command that doesn't exist in the Pronto uh, file, you will have uh, an error code basically pop up in debugger show, uh, telling you that it's unavailable. Uh, you can later on rename all of these, obviously, for convenience. And once you have all of them uh, once created, you don't really need to uh, create them again and again you can use them as a reference for future projects you can basically build a database uh, quite the same as as crestron database that will contain all of your text files and uh, you can in turn create them also in simple windows so whenever in the future you have any project you can just uh, use them instead of creating uh, and creating it over and over again now also, I've created a small uh, test bench 
where we can see how it works live. I use the TPM C8X basically for uh, just for this test and the, the IR receiver, the Epson IR receiver, you can see on the left, uh, the, yeah, on the left side of it. Uh, this would be the Wirestorm control module. I use just the normal uh, Unify switch for it, gigabit one. Uh, you can see that currently transmits my laptop onto this screen and uh, there's a small X panel that shows you controls basically of the of the mouse uh, within this within this Crestron touch panel. It's also interesting to know that if IR probes are paralleled you can control multiple devices from the same IR port as long as the IR codes are different from one another. Just make sure you don't daisy chain them as uh, that way you're dropping the voltage and might not work. Uh, other than that you should be good to go. And uh, I do hope that this video will help anyone with their integration of Wirestorm. I know that these modules are created as a quick experiment, so if you uh, do feel the need to upgrade them or modify them, feel free to do so. Uh, all of them will be available, as I mentioned, on Yahoo Groups. So with that, I would like to thank you for watching this video, and uh, I'll see you in the next one, where we might cover some other aspect of uh, Wirestorm API.